I would like to show you a case um, of a patient. It's a 30-year-old woman that uh, presented in the office with a failing lateral incisor in the anterior region. And you see on the picture it's the left lateral incisor. And on the x-ray you see a failing root. Uh, we were not able to restore this root anymore with the crown. So we plan to take it out and uh, in the same session place an immediate implant. And today we are able to restore these teeth immediately and we fabricated this kind of shell provisionary um, for the session. And you can only place these kind of immediate temporary restorations when the implant has an insertion torque of over 35 newton centimeters. So today the surgical concept of immediate implant placement always try to avoid um, to raise a flap. So we don't raise a flap, we place the implant and we do the drilling in the palatal wall of the socket and then try to engage the implant on, in the palatal wall. So in this case we placed a BLT as an active implant of a diameter of 4.1 and length of 14 millimeters and we had a primary stability of over 35 newton centimeters and here you see the lock sim and you have the control of the insertion depth uh, with these little notches you can see on the picture and I always try to insert the implant three to four millimeters beneath the soft tissue margin I want to uh, achieve. This is the end of the surgery. You see we placed this temporary on the implant plus I placed a connected tissue graft which I inserted under the soft tissue between the buckle plate and the soft tissue and I have to emphasize you can only carry out this kind of immediate implant protocols when the buccal cortical plate is present. On the right picture you see the healing after three months and this was the day when we took the impression of the implant and you see nice healing. We fabricated a crown. It's a zirconia framework that we bonded on this titanium base and of course we have here the dental um, veneering porcelain. So whenever it's possible we go for screw retained crowns today because we want to avoid uh, excess cement that is um, causing maybe peri-implant inflammation, so whenever possible go for screw retained. Here you see the healing and actually we have now a follow-up of this case of one and a half year and the patient is very happy with the result. We have an aesthetically pleasing result. Uh, we don't see any uh, inflammation or signs of inflammation of the soft tissue. If you take a look at the x-ray we see this is uh, when we started with a failing root. This is the uh, end of the surgery with the temporary in place impression taking and here you have the final crown, the final restoration and you don't see any signs of uh, crestal bone resorption, you have perfect conditions. If I summarize, I have to say we have a very nice macro design or let's say shape of the implant because it, is a lot, it allows for high primary stability, especially for immediate implant cases. But in my office actually I use this implant for almost all the indications I see. Plus we have the SL active surface which guarantees for a fast bone response and bone healing. And for me, in my concept for a restorative part, I'm happy to have a titanium base because then we are free or let's say the technician is free to work with whatever material he wants to. He can use zirconia or can also use lithium disilicate um, because we have this titanium platform we can work on. The patient was very happy with the final result and so was I because uh, we don't see any uh, resorption. We see soft tissue stability, we don't see any kind of inflammation and for example this patient which was a, a pretty young woman it was very important for her to have fixed teeth from the first day so she never went with a removable denture or anything so um, yes she was very happy with the result and also um, with the comfort we were able to give her uh, during the whole procedure. Mm -hmm.